Next question. Um, I would first like to start off saying I love the clean canteen that you have. Um, it's amazing. I have one myself. <laughs> um, and I would like to ask, um, Stephen Harper specifically said this, but I mean all you other parties as well, um, have clearly stated that uh, the gas companies are gouging us consumers and they're the ones gaining the profits. I would just like to know from all of you um, what it is that you plan on doing to protect us consumers from these uh, gas prices. Okay, why don't we start with uh, Ms. Cadis, who's been last up until now. Well, I could just say that a vote for Stephen Harper is a vote for big oil and being gouged and being inflated in your pockets. I mean, we moved a motion and we support in the House of Commons to ensure that the Competition Act is stronger to uh, stop price gouging and to uh, ensure that there is transparency so people could know why is it one price for one company and another, which is extremely puts the uh, consumer in a very difficult position. They uh, did not want to do that. They actually took away the price monitoring transparency mechanism. Now they're talking about doing it. But the bottom line is that their uh, allegiance to ensuring um, that the oil sands uh, goes out of control with no uh, safeguards or environment and for not also encouraging more energy efficiency through programs like we do in our liberal plan alternatives. We need to change what we are doing as a society. We need to do it responsibly and we will protect the consumer. We did support that motion. Uh, and the fact that now it's being said is very, very suspect. Mr. Kent? Sure. Well, with, with respect, that's poppycock. Um, Canada is an energy superpower. Um, our environmental program, the Turning the, the Corner program, uh, imposes very stiff penalties on polluters, all polluters. Polluters in the oil patch, polluters in the energy um, generation business, uh, polluters uh, in private life. Um, the Harper government has, has dedicated billions of dollars, $2 billion in the search for um, alternative energies. Um, the big problem here is we are too dependent on big oil. Big oil, Saudi controlled oil, has their foot, have their feet on our throats. Uh, we need to find ways, clean fuels, uh, to reduce greenhouse gases and alternative fuels which we control the prices of uh, to, to get big oil off our backs. Uh, the Prime Minister has said because of this recent uh, jump in gas prices uh, that there will be an inquiry after, um, after this election to take a look at why prices go up so much faster uh, and come down so much uh, more slowly and he will do that. A big part of our problem is simply that we are dependent on oil. We are dependent on the gas for our cars because many of us drive the cars every day. Important to, to take a bite out of the monopoly that the gas and oil companies have is to develop alternatives. Let's have a better public transit system so that we're not dependent on the car to get into, the Tor into Toronto. Let's have one fare for all of the GTA so that you're not paying once for the York Region Transit and then you're paying again for TTC. As soon as you're driving as a couple of two, uh, as a pair, it's cheaper to take your car. We need to uh, encourage that end of it. The other thing is the oil and gas industry gets subsidies of over a billion dollars a year. In 2006, the oil and gas industry earned over 30 billion dollars in Canada. Why are we subsidizing an industry like this? It makes absolutely no sense. It costs the equivalent of energy of two barrels to make one barrel of oil to export to the U.S. It makes no sense. And uh, basically, we've got to change the way we look at the oil and gas industry, and we've got to give incentives for new industries, emerging industries in geothermal, in solar, in alternative energies. We've got to support companies like Bullfrog Power that are creating alternative energy and feeding it into the system. Thank you. I say, I say that what's poppycock is the gas prices. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. We in the NDP is uh, supporting an independent watchdog to look over gas prices, regulators to oversee the price of gas, uh, to make sure it meets the global price and make sure it, it meets the needs of Canadians. Uh, secondly, we're in favor of public transit as a solution. We're offering millions of dollars in public transit. Uh, we, we offer um, $400 million in public transit. Now let's look at what that, this will do here for the St. E community. 
because you have uh, uh, the Clark bus coming not too often, every 20 minutes or so, and then sometimes they don't come at all, and the bus down newest minister that heads down to York, they don't come very often either. They uh, don't necessarily, uh, they don't come on Sundays, uh, the one on Clark, uh, not on the right schedule. So it's time to improve this transportation system, give good alternatives to using cars. Cars? I mean, they're expensive. People need to pay for transit here. It's time to put funding into that. Would the candidates all like to make a, a further remark for 30 seconds? Ms. Cadis? Yes, I'd just like to add that in our Liberal plan we have that first national transit strategy, something that's been pro uh, promised by the Conservative government. They said they'll have one, but with no new dollars. That's impossible. We have uh, made a commitment to support uh, Ontario's Move Ontario 2020 transit plan and their initiatives, including the Ninth Street subway. This is extremely groundbreaking. It's reflective of our partnerships, our new deal with cities, uh, which we uh, had instituted a couple of years ago, we were in government, and this is extremely important for quality of life, for our economy, for our climate change, reducing greenhouse gas emissions, for our health, and for, uh, for what we know to be uh, a standard of living uh, in this day and age, where we will Bye. really uh, be in sync uh, with other countries and move forward with our new technologies. But the transit is really key because we are behind and we need to now work together with different levels of government, something that certain governments are not prepared to do, to be a real partner. Well, just to again correct the record, um, the Harper government uh, has been uh, working, spending billions of dollars across this con con country on transit infrastructure. Um, Seven hundred million dollars is has been committed, and the dig has begun to extend the Spadina subway to York University and the Vaughan Corporate Centre. For the past two years, I've been working with the Subway North project to extend um, the Young Street subway from Finch to Richmond Hill. This is going to be a two billion dollar plus project um, and it needs the cooperation of all levels of government and I think um, our successes uh, in getting the Spadina subway uh, project together um, need to be followed but there are a lot of um, uh, cooks in the kitchen on this one um, and we need federal leadership we need someone inside the conservative government to keep an eye on this this huge and, and vital project Again, the, the transit strategy is key to, to breaking the monopoly that the oil and gas industry have on, on us, on the price of gas. I'm not for regulating the price of gas, but if we have more choices, forcibly the prices will come down because they will be selling less and will be more eager to, to come up with uh, other alternatives, let's say. So part of our plan is the GST. We want to put it back up to 6% from where it is five, at now at 5, and that 1% will go to municipalities, and that will be used by municipalities for infrastructure and that will include transit as well so those are the things that we need to focus on thank you mm -hmm. Uh, the NDP is dedicating 1% of all gas funds towards transportation so that we can have a more consistent public transportation system. And uh, let's look at the costs, the rising costs here. They cost $2.75 uh, $2 and $3 respectively. What if you want to go downtown? You have to pay about $10 uh, both ways. That's far too excessive. So it's time we have an integrated um, fee like that. And let's look at the rising cost of transportation, whereas the minimum wage is kept down. The NDP is proposing to raise the minimum wage to $10 an hour. This is what we've been advocating for, we've been campaigning for here in Thornhill, raising the minimum wage to $10. Um, this is what the NDP is putting forward in Jack Layton in Parliament. If you elect an NDP here and across Canada, that's what we want to implement. I can see the next headline in Vaughan today is going to be poppycock. <laughs>